on the Earth, climate change and its major cause. Introduction and results. It has been said that the solution to the end object problem in astronomy is the oldest of humanity. The major factor in the change of Earth's average temperature is related to its distance to the Sun. It is what I claim. Other evaluations that I have done, such as burning all the fossil fuels extracted for a century with atmospheric air, do not give the amount of heating that we are experiencing. Such lack of heating prompted me to investigate more. As it is natural, the distance from the Sun to the Earth changes, and it is due to centrifugal and gravitational forces with respect to the Sun. However, the gravitational ones are also due to the other planets and bodies in the solar system. Such gravitational forces must follow Newton's universal law with some factors that have been included. It is known that the amount of heat irradiated by the Sun taken by a body depends on the distance to its source. A function which may describe the temperature field for a spherical Sun is close to an inverse distance squared root field. Using data taken by satellites flying through the solar system, a function can be constructed which results in temperature equals 5 to e to the 8 times the radius raised to the minus 0.56 power. That is in Kelvin degrees. Therefore, a solution to the problem of finding the distance between Earth and the Sun are with respect to time and therefore indicate the temperature of the field at orbital distances. So the solution needs first to solve the end body problem. In this work, I use system dynamics in order to figure out both answers. As a result, the ice ages and global warming of the planet can be explained with this new model, and therefore the variation of our average temperature with time, which I call it the orbital temperature. Formulation. There are several factors for the climate change of Earth. It can be thought as a total derivative in mathematics. The total change of a temperature function T, which depends on several factors Fi, can be written as the next formula. In English, that formula says, the total change of temperature is given by a summation of the partial change of temperature T respect to factor 1 times the change of factor 1 plus the change of temperature T respect to factor 2 times the change of factor 2 and so on. In the past, I did the first term F1 by burning all the fossil fuel extracted during the last century with air, and I didn't find a big change in the atmosphere's temperature. In this work, I am only presenting the second case where F2 is the distance from planet Earth to the Sun, involving all the other planets' influences, and it shows that for global warming it is much more important than the amount of heat given by burning such amount of fuels with air. Following the same mathematical thinking, the distance from the Earth to the Sun is affected by the presence of all the planets in the system. In this study, I used 27 bodies with quasi-concentric orbits around the Sun. The change of the distance from Sun to Earth, DRE, can be put as an equation. In English, the total change of Earth's orbital radius is given by a summation of the partial change of Earth's radius with respect to basic Earth's to Sun radius times the change basic Earth to Sun radius plus the change of Earth's radius with respect to distance from Earth to Mercury and so on. And each other planet has its own total differential associated, such as DRME for Mercury up to 27 planets. A composite matrix approach is taken in order to compute the distances between the centers of the Sun and planets, and the distances among the planets. As it is a dynamical system, it is better to assemble a matrix. The sign of the matrix cells depend on the side respective of the planet orbit, outside or inside. 
as the variation of the distances also depends on the angle of the given point at an instant, trigonometric functions affect the values. In matrix notation, the system solution takes the form with the associated vectors as R27 vector equals square matrix M times column vector X27. With column vectors R27 and X27, in which the last is set with only values of 1, the parameters of the system provide the weights of the terms in order to achieve the proper result. If everything is well formulated, one can say that the values of the terms for the orbit of planets are in compliance with the real known solar system. The variations of distances to the Sun to any other planet can be found this way. The system is assembled with a number of particular three-body problem analytical solutions involving the distances between each planet to Earth and to the Sun, which are affected simultaneously by every other object in the system. 27 discrete objects are used. A square matrix 27 by 27 provides the basic model. An extensive number of 840 parameters must be tuned up. If moons are considered, the number raises, and another type of tripody problem analytical solution must be included. The solution has to match the observed distances and eccentricities of each known planet or object at this time in the history of the system, time which serves to calibrate the set of parameters the best way possible, depending on observations. It is necessary to notice that the best observations have been documented only in the last 300 years since astronomers in Europe have been recording data. Some of the newly discovered trans-Neptune major objects are included, as well as the major asteroids, and the rest of asteroids are divided in two groups in order to balance between both groups and this way reduce the order of magnitude of the matrix. Explanation The Newtonian classical approach is taken as the base. However, that solution is quasi-static and do not provide all the climate variations due to orbital size changes. Sir Isaac Newton calculated the size and shape of the orbit using only one body translating around the Sun he was able to compute an eccentric orbit of elliptical shape. Such shape is perfect. From these facts, he deduced that the force between planets is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. In his formula, two particular parameters are needed in order to compute a planet's orbit, which are its angular momentum and its eccentricity. The general parameters are the mass of the Sun and the universal gravitational constant G. In that approach, there is no way to compute the gravitational attraction with other bodies simultaneously and then calculate the true distance to the Sun and to each other object. Such system remains quasi-static, where changes in one object do not affect explicitly all the other. In the approach that they have taken now, the system is assembled so that every object exerts its influence on the distance to each other and all the bodies. In the case of a linear dynamical system assembled in this way, a transition matrix E raised to AT can be computed with traditional methods. In this case, as the gravitational force terms are inverse squared, there is no apparent solution method available for a system, except for one planet and one sun. In fact, such solution is used at this work as the base, in order to fill the main diagonal terms of the matrix. I could have used Newton's classic formulation instead. There is no method of solution for the system of differential equations, primarily because a long polynomial in square and cubic roots with trigonometric servers is involved. Also, there is no method as far as I know of how to assemble a nonlinear matrix E raised to the AT, which is one of my topics of next research. 
so I had to use an assembly of partial solutions in order to form a composite more practical formulation at this time. Of course, I can propose solutions and then run the full system of equations and, and make the solution this way. However, it is, is not what I have done yet or partially. The three-body problem in two dimensions with the eccentric static is solved using a Lagrangian. Two types of three bodies are considered. One system with a body translating around the sun and the second body translating around the first. The other case is with two bodies translating around the sun concentrically. In order to satisfy the Lagrangian, a modification to the Newtonian potential is included. In Newton's approach, a trigonometric function appeared at the end. In the presented approach, the potential is extended to include a cosine term, as if the central body was somehow out of balance. The solution obtained is different from Newton's case, but it can be made equivalent. However, depending on the values, it can alter the shape of the cosine function, making it wider. Eccentricity is permitted in this way. The major influence between two bodies translating about the center is just the cosine law given the basic size of their orbits and the function of the planet's masses. In the two-body problem, a potential between two bodies is used, as in Newton's case. In the three-body problem, each body contributes with its own potential, so three potentials are used with their respective trigonometric part. Results the Ice Age cycles have been simulated. Variations of the parameters can alter the representation shape of the cycles. However, as seen in previous research by others, there is some sort of cycles and periodicity, which clearly indicates the influence of a cyclic system or more properly the action of some still unknown objects of our solar system. Conclusion it is considered that a good approximation of the distance from the Earth to the Sun, computed using methods of dynamical systems, has been achieved, and therefore the temperature variation as a consequence for Earth. In the near future, a fully strong differential formulation for the system will be investigated, as the solution proposed now shows a way to assemble the system of differential equations. The complete analytical solution must be somewhat analogous to a transition matrix E raised to AT calculated by solving the full system of differential equations. Appendix. Some details for the formulation and a list of parameters. CH27, EH27, ND27, FA27, KE27, FR26 squared, M27, capital M1, capital G1, for a total of 840 parameters. The values given in this simulation are calibrated somehow arbitrarily in order to get the results required, that are also in some cases some, somewhat arbitrary, especially for the unknown objects. The big assumption done here is that at least one planet of the biggest orbit is needed to in order to produce the ice age cycles, even here as at about almost 120,000 Earth years. Two more bodies are proposed, one of about 64,000 years and another of about 26,000 years, believed to be needed in order to comply with the precession of the Earth. At first, a Nibiru but it was proposed only to account for some legends. But with the newly discovered trans-Neptunian objects, there are a couple of them which can be called Nibiru, as the orbits are at the proper size and eccentricity, as for example the object called BP113. In contrast to the Newtonian system, for nine classic planets, only 18 parameters are needed, plus M and G. Parameter description for each or orbiting body. CH is the angular momentum coefficient, and it gives a basic radius with AH its eccentricity term. 
ND is the period of one revolution around the sun given in Earth days in this work. FA is the initial angle phase which indicates the body's polar disposition at initial time. The term FR gives intensity to the gravitational force between two given bodies which complements the distance calculated using the cosine law of trigonometry and masses of the planets involved. The term key E provides a rotation of the orbit similar to Einstein's term for planet Mercury, while M is the mass of each body. Capital M is the mass of the Sun and capital G is Newton universal constant. Note. The reason I offer in order to present this work as it is, and not to go to a more formal, fully analytical solution, has to do with personal causes. It is very urgent for me to show my level of understanding on how to formulate and solve dynamical systems in which every element influences all the others and thus provide a way to make decisions in order to have desired results for a given system from design. In order to achieve a good dynamical solution, a design of the system is needed and then apply a full analysis to it and invent or devise new methods of solution. The consequences of choosing a proper formulation as well as how to tune up the parameters in order to achieve the desired result demanded by the design is crucial in big projects. It provides a solution to the oldest humanity problem that we are facing now and that greatly affects the global warming. Solutions to the last problem can now be much better understood, analyzed and therefore offer better alternatives of mitigation. This work has consumed almost a year of full-time research. Jose Saldivar Olague, May 24, 2024. Many thanks.